Darius Sullivan, who has the honor of serving as Black Rock. Black Rock represents the civil authority of the head of state. Shadow Minister of Environment and Infrastructure, Mr. Glenn Blake, J.D. Shadow Minister of Public Safety, Mr. Walter Bernal, J.D. Shadow Minister of Tourism, Mr. Jane De Silva, J.D. Madam President and members of the Senate, Mr. Speaker and members of the House of Assembly, Bermudians throughout their long and eventful history have demonstrated qualities of confidence, ingenuity and resilience. These attributes have enabled them to prevail through thick and thin, exercising know-how, teamwork and faith 
progress the lives of their families, their communities, and their island. These homegrown trays are alive today, working in countless ways to move Bermuda forward, helping to end years of economic stagnation and decline. They were evident when Bermuda secured the 2017 America's Cup, a remarkable achievement in which Bermudians from government and the private sector came together to succeed in their bid for one of the most prestigious events in world sport. They were evident on Front Street this summer when restaurants battled in a highly watched fish sandwich contest that saw Rosa's Cantina, the winner, team up with Zaki's Bakery on Court Street to form a business partnership that continues today. And they were evident in the outpouring of entrepreneurial energy during the Louis Vuitton World Series of Racing in October. The 59 street vendors included Lifestyles, a company formed by Carlito Burgess and her friend Marjorie Mickey Keynes when they were both unemployed. Ms. Burgess said the America's Cup was a stepping stone for her company, which has since secured a shopfront location in Hamilton. More and more Bermudians are helping to turn the tide, seizing opportunities, making things happen. Confidence is returning, opportunities are growing. The mood is positive, the outlook promising. The government will continue to encourage, facilitate and support these trends because the turnaround is not yet complete and because economic recovery does not happen evenly. Where one Bermudian finds a job, others remain behind. While the fall in unemployment from 9% to 7% is good news, it also means many are still jobless. Much work remains. The economic challenges facing Bermuda remain deep and a matter for concern. High levels of youth unemployment are unacceptable. Annual government deficits are unsustainable and public debt is a threat to Bermudians not yet born. Madam President and members of the Senate, Mr Speaker and members of the House of Assembly, economic recovery will continue to be the national priority because of its potential to help more people more quickly than anything else. Without economic recovery, there can be no human recovery from the setbacks of recent years, nor can there be resolution of the financial problems besetting the public purse. To deal with these challenges, the government continues to pursue a two-track strategy to grow the economy and impose discipline on the public purse. Particular energies have been focused on rebuilding Bermuda's tourism industry and improving the island's attractiveness to international business. Success in either of these ventures depends on winning back investor confidence in Bermuda, and that means implementing what is needed to attract them to our shores. This work is critical because foreign spending is the lifeblood of the economy. Without enough of it, there is shortage and struggle for many. The government's effort to attract foreign investment has taken many forms, changing regulations, passing legislation, cutting red tape, identifying market needs, meeting people, and promoting the island as a place to do business. The work is showing results. Pink Beach is undergoing a $50 million redevelopment. Ariel Sands has received planning approval for an $85 million rebuild. Hamilton Princess has started phase three of its $100 million restoration with the promise of another 100 construction jobs. Coral Beach Club has started the first phase of a $14 million renovation. Morgan's Point has received planning approval for first stage resort development and the just signed agreement for construction of a new St George's Hotel expects shovels in the ground in the first quarter of 2016. These are significant developments that promise job and career opportunities for Bermudians while setting the stage for a tourism revival that was nowhere in sight a few short years ago. More broadly, the economy is showing multiple signs it is moving in the right direction. Bermuda's gross domestic product recorded positive growth for the third consecutive quarter, the first period of sustained growth since 2008. 
The value of construction projects started during the first half of 2015, grew to $89.4 million, an increase of 20.3%. The retail sector, stagnant for years, has recorded 12 straight months of growth, with consumer confidence at the end of this year's second quarter rising to its highest point since 2007. Tourism air arrivals for the third quarter of 2015 were positive for the first time in seven quarters. In public finances, total government revenues for the first six months ending September 2015 were $20.7 million, or 4.5% above the amount collected during the same period last year. Government current account spending outside of debt service was $3.8 million less than the amount spent during the same period ending September 2014. Excluding debt service, government recorded an $8.6 million current account surplus for the first six months of the year, the first time this has happened in seven years. By the end of the fiscal year in March 2016, the government expects to get the current account before debt service to a surplus position, again the first time in more than seven years. These statistics reflect the work of many Bermudians who took stock of the island's dire situation, put their shoulders to the wheel and pushed for a better tomorrow. And for that effort, the statistics also reflect an emerging reality that bodes well for their fellow Bermudians, a growing economy that makes it possible for people to get a job, pay their bills and put food on the family table. The government's programme for the year ahead will therefore continue to focus on growing the economy, stabilising government finances, while bringing forward progressive measures to improve the quality of life for all. Bermudians can expect social support programmes to continue, expansion of human rights protections, reforms to strengthen government accountability and performance, protection and care for the most vulnerable, and steps to expand democratic participation. Madam President and Members of the Senate, Mr Speaker and Members of the House of Assembly, the Government is building a new foundation of opportunity for Bermudians. The changes to date have sought to open new lines of activity and provide new levels of support so that the island once again works for them. It's a work in progress. The duty of the Government in this process is to ensure that opportunity is fairly managed so that everyone, without exception, has a fair chance to succeed. Madam President and Members of the Senate, Mr Speaker and Members of the House of Assembly, a growing number of seniors and adults with severe disabilities are increasingly compromised by the absence of a legal entity to make decisions on their behalf when they are no longer competent and there is no next of kin. Such is the case for dementia and Alzheimer's patients and persons with severe cognitive disabilities. As a result, they are vulnerable and unprotected, as no one is legally authorised to make decisions in their best interest, particularly in relation to medical and financial matters. The existing legislative framework does not allow for legal responsibility where individuals are abandoned or have no family, and the Ministry is unable to fully cater for their, need, for their care needs due to lack of authority for decisions about their care and management. The Ministry, consequently, will explore establishing a statutory role akin to an Office of the Public Guardian that will be legally responsible for dependent individuals without mental capacity and with no family members or next of kin in order to coordinate their care needs and, uh, and finances adequately. The Government will take steps to amend legislation to strengthen protection for seniors and persons with disabilities. The Senior Abuse Register Act, for example, lacks the authority to remove seniors from abusive situations or cases of neglect. There is also an absence of legislation that protects persons with disabilities as well as other vulnerable persons. Government has identified the need to modernise the residential care homes and nursing homes regulations and to take action to ensure staff qualifications necessary to provide the specialised levels of care 
to all seniors of various functional abilities are clearly outlined in place and publicly available for all licensed facilities. Madam President and Members of the Senate, Mr Speaker and Members of the House of Assembly, access to affordable chronic disease medication is vital. When people cannot afford to buy the medications required to treat their chronic conditions, their ability to manage diseases such as diabetes, hypertension and heart disease is compromised. Preventable complications are the result, complications that can lead to emergency room visits, hospitalizations, even premature death. To address the situation, government will pilot a programme to increase access to key medications. The programme is based on joining the Pan American Health Organisation Strategic Fund to procure selected drugs for government programmes at favourable rates. The fund allows for pooled procurement with other countries in the region so that chronic disease medications can be obtained at significant savings. The savings will help government programmes provide affordable, appropriate treatment that people with lifelong conditions need. Madam President and Members of the Senate, Mr Speaker and Members of the House of Assembly. The legislation that currently guides medical professions in Bermuda, the Medical Practitioners Act 1950, is to be modernised to provide a regulatory framework that ensures Bermuda continues to be served by well-trained, competent medical practitioners. The Act will be amended to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the Bermuda Medical Council in regulating medical practitioners, both in terms of professional competence and conduct. The Government will also review the Mental Health Act to ensure it remains in line with international best practices. The absence of a secure forensic psychiatric unit on Ireland is a particular concern. Several reviews have been conducted over the past 10 years, but the logistics of identifying local supporting resources has been challenging. The Government will commit to identifying the resources needed to revamp the Mental Health Act and to identify a forensic psychiatric solution appropriate for the island's size and resources. Madam President and Members of the Senate, Mr Speaker and Members of the House of Assembly, with the number of elderly in Bermuda set to nearly double over the next 20 years, Bermuda requires system-wide changes to ensure it can continue to meet the needs of people requiring long-term care. To this end, the Bermuda Hospitals Board, BHB, is taking initial steps to decrease the cost of care without compromising quality. The BHB's long-term care pilot programme focuses on incremental changes in the hospital's long-term care wards, where there is a mix of residents requiring complex to intermediate skilled nursing care. The programme will reorganise the wards to develop a more efficient staffing model and improve service delivery. The objective is to create a model of care that improves the value for money spent on long-term care. BHB's progress on a model of care will help advance work on a system-wide solution that can accommodate the anticipated need for long-term care for this growing segment of the population. It is expected the solution will entail a shift towards community care and home care, where quality of life is highest and the costs of care are lower. To achieve this shift, it will be necessary to integrate service delivery among primary, hospital and community caregivers. Madam President and Members of the Senate. Mr Speaker and Members of the House of Assembly. Government has undertaken a plan to revitalise the island's agriculture sector for a healthier population. One of its aims is to decrease reliance on international food imports and to support greater local production. In the coming year, the Government will complete a crop sector strategy and launch the dairy sector strategy. The Government will introduce a new policy enabling the Department of Environmental Protection to facilitate importation of new sources of agricultural plant material at potentially lower cost and in a manner that is consistent with international trade obligations and industry best practices. Madam President and Members of the Senate, Mr Speaker and Members of the House of Assembly, 
To make life in Bermuda more fair and more inclusive, the government will bring forward amendments to the Human Rights Act to expand human rights protections. The government holds that to the extent possible, people who suffer from mental disability or impairment should not be discriminated against in employment, accommodation or the procurement of goods and services. It will therefore introduce an amendment adding mental disability as a protected ground under the Human Rights Act. The government will also introduce amendments to outlaw discrimination based on the printed word. A recent Human Rights Commission tribunal concluded that online conversations and comments could not be allowed as evidence of discrimination because written material does not fall within the meaning of notice, sign, symbol, emblem or representation under the 1981 Human Rights Act. The government will therefore amend the Act to include written content such as words, articles and statements as a protected ground against discrimination. A further amendment is intended to prohibit the publication of racist material and racial incitement by expanding the Act's definition of publish or display to include recorded telephone discussions, internet, emails recorded in print or recorded on the internet, radio, television or any other electronic medium of communication. The government also intends to clarify and expand the definition of a public place under the Human Rights Act. In cases where threatening, abusive or insulting words are used to promote or incite hostility against a member of the public distinguished by factors like colour, race, ethnicity or national origin, the definition of a public place will refer to both indoor and outdoor public places. Madam President and members of the Senate, Mr Speaker and members of the House of Assembly, Following a review of the structure of the Department of Human Affairs, the government considers it prudent to reframe the way in which human rights policy is developed and implemented. It will therefore provide the Human Rights Commission with a level of independence in line with international best practice.